Hey, it's Jameson with Four Leaves Glass, and I am sorry about the mess here, but I was in the middle of a project and I thought, dude, film a video, show your friends. So I'm gonna uh, catch you up to speed quickly on what I've done. So um, first of all, I love learning glass and kind of teaching myself and experimenting and playing, and I love bringing you along on the journey. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, let them know I'm out here because uh, I like to bring you along on the learning journey. Here's what I'm working on. So I had a friend who asked me, kind of like you do with cremains, which I've got a video about uh, doing some memorial ashes in a jewelry piece. Um, she asked me, could you do soil in a piece? And I thought, well, that's an interesting question. Her, her um, What she wanted was um, some soil from her grandmother's farm uh, put into some pieces. And so that's exactly what I'm working on. So I wanted to show you quickly what I've done. First, I took some coarse frit in different colors and I put them into my mold and I fired them up to, uh, I'll post the schedule. I think it was 1375. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, go to the video notes, which is just the little bitty arrow that's underneath the video. Click on that little arrow and it should open video notes. I always try to include um, my, my firing schedules. Sometimes I include which glass I use as well. Um, this is a whole smorgasbord of glass. So what I've got here, this is, uh, I'm all Bullseye user. This is Bullseye's Glacier Blue. This is their French Vanilla. Um, this one is Dusty Blue. And then this is a hodgepodge of uh, pieces left over from some puddles. This was French Vanilla and um, Violet Striker, I think. So anyway, I don't know that that matters, but here's what I'm doing. So I have taken the uh, coarse frit, I put it in the kiln, and I did a basically a contour fuse and kind of got it to soften out. And the goal was um, to not have any holes in here. At the same time, in the same firing, I took some of the soil. They gave me a giant bag of it that says granny. And this is not granny's ashes. This is granny's garden soil. <laughs> so I didn't need much, though. Uh, I took a sifter, just got a little bit out, sifted it onto a ceramic tile here, and I fired this at the same time. Here's what's interesting. So look how dark brown that is, and our good old Texas soil, look how red it turned out once it dried out in the kiln. There's a reason why I did this, because I know that this is organic matter, it's going to gas off quite a bit and create bubbles, and bubbles aren't good when you're trying to do jewelry pieces and such. So I pre-fired the soil along with these pieces so that a lot of that bubbleage, <laughs> fun word, um, would come out. And so then what I've done, again trying to catch you up to speed here, I had some uh, mica powder. This is something I bought off of Amazon, I think. Slice of the moon, kind of a silver white mica. I have no idea if this is recommended for glass or not, but I've used it before. I've tested it. I think it works fairly well. Uh, and so I bought it. So uh, this I used, I just took a little bit, I don't know, the end of my little straw here. Put a put it in a, in a little container, little sauce cup thing. And I took about an equal part of the soil. Again, you just use my little straw scoop thing to kind of throw it in there, mixed it up. And now I have um, put it, it was about equal parts. And so now I've put it inside uh, my little uh, line, frit line dropper thing. Boy, I can't find my words. This tool, if you have one of these tools, that's what I put it in. Here's what I'm, my thought process is. I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out. It's all an experiment which is why I did, for the most part, I did a couple of colors of each one. I am now going to drop a little bit of soil in the middle of this, that's my goal, is to try to hit the middle of these, because I don't want soil on the outside, I don't want mica on the outside, because then I'm gonna cap it with clear, and when I cap it with clear, I don't want, it, it needs to seal, and if I've got soil on the outside or something, I'm not gonna get a good seal on this thing. So I'm going to, uh, I, and uh, so <laughs> she asked if I could do this, I said, yes, I could, way back in the spring. And, hang on, I actually did a couple of tests with just soil out of my own garden. Can you see those? Yep. So yeah, you can fuse soil into a piece of glass. So she asked me about it, we never spoke of it again. I called her husband and said, hey, 
dude, if you want a Christmas gift idea, I know Deanna would like something. And so he secretly got me this soil. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of these with the mica mix. And then I'm going to do one of them with the plain soil mix. Because maybe she's not going to like the sparkle. It's not authentic granny soil then. I don't know. So um, that way we've got some to pick from. We've got some options. So I'm going to take these and I'm going to fill these in. And then uh, I'll do them with the regular soil as well. I will cap it with clear. Got a bunch of little broken up clear tech to frit. I'm going to cap it with clear. I weigh these out so that I know how much they weigh. That's what my chicken scratch is over here. What I found is I've got a really neat pendant that I like to set these into. And it needs to be eight and a half grams. Exactly. Eight and a half grams will give me the perfect round piece that fits nicely into my pendant. And so if I can, um, what I've done is I've measured these so that I then know how much clear frit to put in top. So this first one, for instance, is 5.3 grams. Uh, do the math to get me up to eight and a half. So I'll cap this with eight and a half worth of clear. Then when I pull it out of the mold, I'm going to have a nugget that's kind of like this, and it's gonna be extra thick. Now I'll put this back in the fire, in the firing for a full firing again to kind of smooth this out and get this to level out and become nice and round. So I'm posting firing schedules. The first one, again, click the little notes under the video. The first one will be the contour fuse that I use to get this. Then I'll post the firing schedule that I use uh, in the mold the second time, capped with clear. And then I'll post the firing schedule that I use for the third firing and hopefully the final firing that'll get me to um, jewelry ready pieces. So uh, stand by and uh, we'll see how this turns out. Okay, that's done. I'm gonna carefully pick this up so you can see the soil. I almost said powder. It's not powder, it's not frit, it's soil that's uh, placed basically in the middle of all of those. Uh, here's an interesting learning as I was doing this. I did the mixture first, the ones with the mica first, and um, that mica almost made the soil sticky uh, to some extent, and so it was very easy to control. Then when I went for the regular soil without the mica, um, boy, that stuff came shooting out. <laughs> and so even out of this tiny little hole on here, uh, it came pouring out a lot faster, so it was a little harder to control but I think I'm good. So now I'm gonna cap these. I didn't wanna do this when I left that one and that one empty, but now I'm gonna go ahead and cap these with the, the clear tecta and uh, I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so now I've got these filled with clear frit. In most cases, if not all cases, they're probably gonna be too much um, clear here and these are gonna weigh more than 8.5 ounces or grams. And that's mostly because I wanted to get a really good clear cap on these and get a good seal. And so I realized I was gonna have to load them up a little bit more. Um, you know what, what I've found in the past is if they're a little heavy, I'll just grind them down on my grinder to get them down to the size that I need. And I'd be happy to do that in this case. So I'd really only one of these is going to become a pendant. I'm going to let her husband choose what he wants. The rest, I'll probably glue some magnets onto the back and she can have them and give them to family or something if she wants. And these are family friends. So I'm just going to gift that to them. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the kiln with a full fuse. Uh, hopefully I put enough clear in here to, um, to give me that full clean cap and it seals up all the holes. I'll be honest, I'm a little less concerned about that since this is soil and not cremains. If this was somebody's ashes, then I would be piling these on probably even higher just to make sure that I get a 100% tight, great seal. But it's dirt and I'm a little less concerned about that. Again, this was just broken up clear tecta. I use my scraps, I kind of break them up uh, and then keep this on hand because I find that this does, um, it's clean. I want to make sure it's clean before I cut it up, uh, but then it does nice caps on there. So stay tuned and see what they look like when they come out of this next phase. Okay, these are out of the kiln and we had some interesting results. So um, remember there were two, this one and this one that I didn't put anything in. Uh, and most of these look good, but here's what's really interesting. On this one, can you see? And on this one, the glass melted around the, the clear cap, and I'm confident that there was glass on the top, but it kind of melted around that, and there's actually just exposed soil here. Check that out. Can you see that? Just, yeah. So these two did not cap. This one capped a little bit, but not fully. Uh, but the rest of these did. And so you can kind of tell that there's some mica, you know, this is one of them that has the mica in it. Um, the one that didn't have the mica didn't cap. Um, you know, mica in this one, cause it's nice and shiny. 
Uh, here's an example where there was mica in this one, which is kind of shinier, and there was not in this. Um, they didn't bubble too much, um, which is good because I pre-fired the um, the crema uh, not cremains, the uh, soil. So, you know, this not capping here, it's soil, so whatever, I don't care. It's not a big deal, no big loss. If these were ashes, that would be um, not a good thing at all. If these were ashes, here's what I would do. Personally, I'd throw a whole bunch more clear on here and just stick it right back into the kiln. I wouldn't mess around with the rest of these, I'd just leave them. Uh, because I, I, you know, out of respect for the ashes, I don't, I don't want to mess around with this too much. So if these came out as ashes like this, I'd put some powder and then some clear frit, and I'd just pile the heck out of this and get them sealed in there because I don't want to mess around with those. Uh, so that's how I would fix that if that if that had happened. So um, now I'm going to pop these out. Let's see here. And so what happens is this is super thick. See. And so now I'm going to take uh, this and clean it off and put it back in the kiln for another full fuse and let it spread out more and kind of thin out. And uh, I'll show you what that looks like here in a little bit. Okay, so I've got these loaded into the kiln. Uh, I never throw away any paper. So even the scraps are good for little stuff like this. <laughs> this one clearly used to be part of a circle. Uh, these are the two pieces that didn't fully fuse. And so I thought, let's just have some fun with this and see what happens. So I put some more uh, dirt on top and then just put a big old piece of tech to on top and uh, we'll see what happens with those. I don't know if those will still cap clearly or not, but you know, it's an experiment. Let's have some fun, see what happens. The rest of these will smooth out after a nice uh, full fuse and uh, I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Okay, hello. I'm excited to show you what I ended up with here. So let's start with the two that hadn't capped the first time that I just threw some Tecta on. Um, you know, I probably would need to full fuse this again, uh, do a little um, work on these, but, um, you know, using the scenario that I talked about the other day, if these were ash and I was trying to cap that ash, um, you know, frankly, in an emergency, uh, these worked fine. So they're, they're not great and um, there would need to be a little work done to these, but uh, there's no loose soil coming out, and so um, there you go on those. But the rest of these turned out well. Um, this one didn't have very much in it, but you can see uh, it almost looks like uh, islands, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> like the Hawaiian islands or something. But you can see how that mica kind of makes that sparkle. I'm not sure where to hold these things. Can you see that a little bit? And then um, here's an example of no mica hopefully you're seeing these okay so that's no mica and then that's with the mica you can see it just changed the color a little bit there's a little more sparkle in there but um you know generally i think either one of them are very nice um last two here so nice full fuses on the back we don't have any um you know soil coming through uh there's a couple of dots here but that seems all sealed up um so, you know, again, if I, I think fusing the blanks first kind of gives me a seal on which to put the soil, or again, if you're using cremains, then um, that seal allows that to be, uh, you know, that, that puck that I created allows the, the soil to be fully trapped in there. And then here's the last piece. I used the mic on this. I think that this is the one that um, my friend's husband is going to going to choose for her if I had to guess. So you can, you know, glue a little bale onto the back and turn it into a necklace. The rest of these I may just uh, glue some magnets on the back. She can use them as refrigerator magnets. So there you go. I hope you uh, enjoyed this. Again, if you, uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I try to publish um, as I'm learning. I like to share with you. So have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.